the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, Ipman, has blamed the inadequate supply of petrol from the depot in Lagos for the scarcity being experienced in Abuja and other parts of the country. Ipman President Mr. Chinedu Okoronkwo made this known in an interview with the news agency of Nigeria on Monday in Lagos. Uh, joining us in the studio now is the energy editor of the Daily Trust newspaper, Mr. Simon Echewe from Sunday, uh, to give us updates on what is happening and, 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 and help us make sense of why this um, first casting seem to never leave the city of Abuja. Mr. Simon, it's a pleasure to talk to you this morning. Mr. Simon, we have seen um, the fuel queues returning. It basically now a, 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 a matter of one week on, one week off, as we see in the capital city and several, so many other states in Nigeria. What exactly is happening? Yeah, I, I can say this: the first and second quarter of this year has not been a fair one for Nigeria, you know, Nigerians in terms of our petrol. Basically, what I think is happening now is the Ukraine and Russia face off. The diesel prices are high. The diesel is not subsidized. And the trucks need diesel to run, you know, to bring in petrol from the depots in Lagos up to the hinterlands. Basically, I think this is where the problems are. Marketers have said this. We spoke to one or two of the NATO members, the National Association of Road Transport Owners, and this is their same complaint. I think it's a very big issue, especially for the hinterlands. Hmm. From our observations and checks so far, Lagos, Ogun, Axis, petrol is there, no scarcity. But coming straight to these places, Abuja especially, Kano too, as of last week I was in Kano and the traffic was great. The, 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 the queue was heavy. Hmm. Same thing in Abuja now, it's, it's, it's much more than ever. Last week it was, but this week it, it has worsened. So are we getting any information from the NMPC regarding any, any steps that are being taken to, to alleviate this? Uh, NMPC actually, it's not to be fair to them, they are not in charge of the logistics base. Theirs is to make sure the fuel is available and uh, at the global price of 120 something dollar per, uh, per, per barrel, they try to make sure they're pushing enough subsidy to keep the you know the, 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 the pump price at 165. That is where their rule ends. However, the Nigerian Midstream Downstream Re Petroleum Regulatory Authority, NMDPRA, is in charge of the logistics and everything in the downstream sector. Now, two weeks ago, precisely, the NMDPRA met with the Northern Petroleum Marketers. It's an association just like the Ipman, but the Northern chapter. And they had said, okay, they are going to resolve these issues. But then the issue they were trying to resolve then was about the bridging claims. Payments made for, you know, you know, differentials in transporting, you know, petrol from the coastal area, especially Lagos, where we have the depots to the hinterlands. That has been resolved. But there was a, there was a complaint about the diesel rate and from what we got from sources there, the officials, the diesel is not subsidized. They are pushing for the government to give them what they call a diesel palliative, say like a, a 500 million or whatever, maybe for a three months time or so, depending when the Ukraine, the Russian issue will go down and the normal supply of diesel will flow in. But for now, I don't think anybody has reached an agreement on that. Mr. Simon, uh, some, some of our viewers would say uh, we have seen a number of depots in, in the northern parts of the country. I think there's one in Suleja um, and quite a number of other places. Is it not possible to have some of this fuel pumped to this depot and from there distributions can be done as a way of cutting down on the, prices of this, on the diesel price of these distributions? This is actually the best thing, and that was why those depots you mentioned were actually built. We have one in Suleja, which is Niger. We have one in Mina. That's two in, 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 in Niger. We have one in Ilorin. We have one in Makudin, Benue State. There is that in Kano, and, you know, Kaduna is actually even a refining hub. 
So that's why we have all these places, even in Gumbi up to Maiduguri and Yula. We have this refinery structure, in, I mean, the, the, the depot structure in those places. But then, according to recent reports from the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPC, the pipes connecting this depot are in bad shape. I remember the, 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 the last report of March shows that most of this vandalism, the vandalism point is more around the, the Ogun Aziz, Musimi area, Ibadan, where there is a depot, and then Port Harcourt. It got to a point two years ago that uh, the uh, depot for Elugu was shut down because of the frequent vandalism. So MNPC from this, their record is saying because of this vandal act, most of these you know, depots are not operational. Until these things are fixed, that's when they can be operational. The Sulejia used to be very good and used to be uh, operational, but for now, nobody knows what happened to it. According to some sources, they are loading there. But you can agree with me that just a single depot is not enough to deliver, you know, petrol to everyone within the northern axis. Hmm. All right. So finally, uh, Mr. Simon, from in your experience as as an as an energy reporter, and from what you're seeing on ground right now, is there any end in sight? I think uh, basically, if the government sits back and say, "Oh, because." Diesel is, so, is not part of the subsidy. We're not going to do anything. I, I think commuters will just suffer, motorists will suffer, and even the economy will suffer. I think uh, the best thing for the government to do, NNPC, NNZPRA, is to you know form a committee, meet with these marketers, and see how they can resolve their issue. Yeah, you recall the same issue happened with the aviation sector just in some few weeks back when they threatened to, you know, shut down the, you know, operations because they can't bear the cost of diesel anymore. And uh, the government came, where, you know, the National Assembly intervened and they said, okay, they were going to give a kind of benchmark for, uh, I think, three months. But then, uh, you agree with me that those things flopped. And as we speak, the aviation guys are doing what they call best endeavor. Mm -hmm. That's why at times you see flights are cancelled and now nobody, authorities can't even say anything to them because they are sourcing diesel as their best way. That this is exactly what we are going to see on a larger scale with the petroleum issue if the government is not proactively tackling this. We know, yes, it's not part of the subsidy, but because this is a global crisis, the diesel issue is a global crisis, not just in Nigeria. It's a very big deal for a country already that is suffering from energy, a lack of energy access. The government will need to be responsible enough to take action. Mm. Thank you very much. Uh, we've been talking to the energy editor of Daily Trust newspaper, Mr. Simon Echewo from Sunday, uh, who has brought us to speed with what is happening. I am sure by now we would all be having the completion of the Dangote refinery as part of our prayer point, uh, every Nigerian, I mean. Uh, as a way of escaping from this, but even that is some months away. Thank you for finding time to join us this morning and provide enlightenment for our viewers.